Hey, what's up guys? Arav here and welcome back to another episode of my F1 23 My Team Career Mode. This is part number 75 today for the Chinese Grand Prix in Season 5. If you guys did miss the previous episode at the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, then be sure to go check that one out before you see this one. Once again, having Abu Dhabi as an early track in this calendar has given us the goods. It was an electric race and we had a shock new race winner in Formula 1. One, and it didn't involve one of the Aston Martin cars, the best team on paper. No, it was the Alfa Romeo Haas of Felipe Dragovic that managed to just about keep our teammate Teo Porcher at bay by the end of it. But for most of the race, he was actually leading and controlling that race. Maybe with a bit more tire wear or one or two more laps, maybe Porcher could have ruined the party and secured his third win in a row. But thankfully for us, for our sake and for everyone's sake, really, Teo Porcher could not get that third win of the season to make it three out of three only the two to kick off the season but it still leaves him in a very solid position of course he's leading the championship and then there's a massive gap and I said this at the end of last episode if you removed poor chair from the standings this would honestly be such a closely contested drivers championship so far I know it's very early days you know we're only going to round four it's way too early to be talking about the actual championship fight but in terms of the numbers right now with the points it's very very close from second place downwards but poor chair at the moment in a league of his own two wins a second place not being lower than second uh, you know with that way and um, you know in terms of his raw pace and qualifying that's there as well you know we have created a very scary teammate but uh, there were signs in Abu Dhabi that we are getting used to the car maybe comfier with it we were one of the quickest cars out there on that aggressive two stop and we're now coming into the Chinese Grand Prix which we haven't done so far on the F123 game in my team career mode so this is effectively a brand new track to the series and uh, you know F1 itself is returning to Shanghai for the first time uh, ever since obviously the, the 2020 and 2021 years affected by COVID by the lockdowns um, so it's kind of fitting that we have China returning to the calendar in this season as well but not starting off the session in the best way with a fuel system fault so three minutes we're gonna have to take out which uh, it's not it's not a major thing but obviously a circuit that we don't do very, very often at the moment as it stands because it's not part of the normal calendar yet. Obviously going forwards now for next year's F1 game, F124, it will be part of the normal calendar. So we'll probably have to get used to Shanghai again. But right now we're not used to really coming to this circuit every single season. So very out of practice. There's a lot of rust and a bit of dust to kind of blow off in terms of the cobwebs around here. Um, getting, getting used to things, especially with these modern F1 cars. The last time F1 went to Shanghai, very different crop of cars. You know, the way you take certain corners, the muscle memory that you, you know, you and I maybe still have from this circuit from, you know, previous years is very different now to this crop of cars and especially with maxed out cars. So that little bit of time loss in Q1 was a bit unfortunate, but we, we still look pretty damn handy, actually. Third place, uh, Leclerc, though, looking quick. And I must say, Mercedes there as well with Russell looking pretty decent. You know, in Abu Dhabi, it may have ended in misery for, for Mercedes in the end of it. But, um, you know, Merck overall looked like they did take a step forward in terms of upgrades and Abu Dhabi. So is that going to continue into Shanghai? Uh, Ferrari look all right with Verstappen up there in P5. Looks like Red Bull and McLaren have definitely taken a step, uh, taken a step backwards, it would seem. Because Red Bull obviously was looking so good in Las Vegas. Not so much in Abu Dhabi. And then McLaren looked better in Abu Dhabi. And then they did make the most of it. And uh, both of them now are kind of back to where they were at the start of the season. You know, both former, two former teams. Teams used to fighting for the front for wins for the podiums being in the title contention at the moment floundering in the midfield and we've got this new kind of pecking order with Aston Martin there Haas Audi ourselves and maybe now Mercedes as a surprise re-entry to the top three of Formula One who's gonna we're, gonna we're gonna have to see as we go into Q2 then we've already done one flying lap it was just a bit of a banker lap to be honest on a used set of soft tyres so this is the real lap that we're doing and you can kind of tell that the first lap time was done on used tyres because I've gained over one second on this second flyer and that just isn't quite realistic for actual second laps uh, that you gain time on you know a couple of tenths but over a second that 
that's more to do with the tire where we had on the first set. But we get through into Q3, and to my surprise, and this is a big surprise, Teo Porcher has not even made it into the top 10. The man who got two poles to start off the season was high up there again for Abu Dhabi. He's knocked out in P12. Again, some big names knocked out. Science for Audi, Porcher for ourselves, Verstappen for Ferrari, Norris for Red Bull. Uh, both Haskars make it into the top 10, which is great for them. And really great for them is the two Mercedes cars, Bottas and Russell, also feature in the top 10 shootout. And shout out to Liam Lawson as well, because he's, well, nearly four tenths ahead of Leclerc in Q2 there. And his teammates, 1.9 off the pace. So Liam Lawson pulling out a worldly time in Q2 and maybe reminding us that even though maybe the Red Bull car maybe isn't as quick as it was last season, there's a reason why Lawson was one of our main, uh, you know, was our main title rival in last season. He's a very, very good driver. And even in this maybe more difficult Red Bull to the McLaren he was used to, he's still very capable. But let's see, that was Q2. It all gets reset and we go again in Q3. And at the moment, Lawson's only P8. We're down in P10, having done a banker lap. And this is our final lap. The checkered flag has fallen from P10 up to... Well, we gained about 4.3 tenths, that was. And we're... Uh, oh, God. Oh, no. Only up to P8. That is... What the... Huh? Russell and Bottas? It's a Mercedes one. To, we've, we've wound back the clock. We've returned to Shanghai for the first time on this game. And we've wound back the time to the last Chinese Grand Prix. IRL, Mercedes dominating. 1-2. Russell on pole. Bottas second. Unbelievable stuff. Mercedes. I, I said they took a step forward in Abu Dhabi. And here's some proof. They definitely have continued to make a step forward. Mercedes, for the first time, you've got to say, since what? Season 1 of this entire series, you know, last July, this is the first time they've looked really, really decent. It's a two-by-two -two situation, two Mercs, two Aston Martin Hondas, then the Ferrari of Schumacher, who does very well, Fittipaldi getting the better of the last race winner, Felipe Drakovic, P6 to P10, and for us, very puzzling, in P8, we have uh, got some work to do, although, to be fair, it's very close, you know, we're only three tenths off, and we're down to P8, so it's a very close qualifying session, but my oh my, this may look like a very different race. We might have a uh, Mercedes Aston Ferrari fight on our hands in, in, in the top five. And can we do anything to get in the middle of it? I hope so. Let's go to the grid for the Chinese Grand Prix. The Chinese Grand Prix then is upon us once again. It's a race that saw Michael Schumacher claim his final Formula One victory in 2006, as well as Red Bull's first win with Sebastian Vettel in 2009. There's no doubt there's plenty more drama to come here in Shanghai. We start a lap here at Shanghai with the long, difficult right-handers of turns one and two, the first of 16 corners that make up this 3.3-mile circuit. The incredibly long back straight provides the best passing opportunity of the lap, with speeds in excess of 200 miles per hour before we head into the braking zone of turn 14. So with the race not far away from starting, here's what today's grid rundown looks like. George Russell will begin today's event in pole position and Valtteri Bottas will line up alongside. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Leclerc, Sonoda, Mick Schumacher, Fittipaldi, Gasly, the owner driver, Liam Lawson, Drogovic, Sainz, Theo Porcher, Verstappen, Norris, Ocon, Oscar Piastri, Ricardo, Albon, Perez, Joe, Magnussen, and Logan Sargent. It's almost time for those five red lights to go out then. Let's see who can prevail today. It's just about time to go down to the track for the beginning of the race, but before we do, Anthony Davidson, what types of strategy do you think we can expect for today's event? Well, there's a lot that both the driver and the team have to keep in mind when going into a race. The tyres, fuel, energy recovery systems, the list goes on and on. But I think the key to today's victory will come down to the pit stop strategy. Come in too soon and you might find yourself needing more than one stop. Too late and you're putting yourself at a disadvantage by spending longer on worn tyres. A very different grid is set for this Chinese Grand Prix then. I can't believe it. A front row lockout 
for Mercedes. Very strange on this game with this series as well so far. But of course, so far this season, it's been a season of difference. You know, very different vibe, different names, different teams involved. And uh, this is the first time for us in our inter-team battle with Poor Chair. This is a first great opportunity to get one on him. You know, he's won two races already this season. He's not been lower than second place. you got to say today, if he pulls that off, that's going to be pretty darn impressive and fair play. But I don't think he will. And this is a great chance for us to outscore him by a decent margin and try and get back a bit of authority in our own team here. But with Mercedes and Aston Martin holding the top four spots on the grid, surely this is going to be another different winner here in this season so far as we go to five red lights and we're underway it's the return to the Chinese Grand Prix here in Formula One and it's a shocking shocking getaway for Mick Schumacher Fittipaldi ahead gets a good one he's trying to go around the outside of Sonoda Leclerc's had a blinder the, the the man from Monaco is up into first place Russell has lost P1 he's down to second and Fittipaldi look at him go he's almost going to get P4 away from Sonoda we've managed to climb up to P6, so two positions gained from P8. That's pretty solid. I'll take that. Gasly had a slow start, but I think he was affected more by Schumacher, who was directly ahead of him on the circuit. But Leclerc, cool and calm and collected in first place, already half a second ahead of Russell. Bottas then in third place, and uh, behind, fighting going on between, well, the, 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 the two that were fighting for first and second in Abu Dhabi are now fighting for 10th and 11th. How the mighty have fallen from one episode to another. Poor chair trying to get the better of Felipe Drogovic and might just get a bit of revenge from Yas Marina here in Shanghai to get P10 but that will be only for one measly point but we've got 27 laps to go still a long way and who knows what could happen and the way poor chair has been driving uh, wouldn't be shocked if he was able to climb up the order but right now we're in a good position P6 just couldn't quite hang on to the back of Fittipaldi though through the last sector and instead we've actually got pressure from Liam Lawson as Alexander Albon is out of the Grand Prix the McLaren driver retires very early on but uh, yeah Liam Lawson's actually climbed up a few positions and is pressurizing us so uh, yeah obviously he did very well in Q2 couldn't quite pull the get together the same lap in Q3 but clearly he's got some sort of pace around here so need to be wary of that but uh, I'm hopefully going to be looking more forwards than backwards in this race but this is what happened then to Alexander Albon. So he got overtaken uh, by the Alpine. A little bit of contact made uh, in the battle. And then the Alpine steps out of the throttle in the dirty air of that Red Bull and Ferrari fight ahead of him. And Albon's just dri driven into him, basically, and couldn't, couldn't see it coming, basically. And he's broken his front wing. And sometimes on this game, when the AI break their front wing so abrasively, so aggressively, they retire. So Albon has retired early. And this is what happened with the two Mercs, Leclerc just got an amazing getaway great great getaway off the five red lights and Leclerc overtakes two Mercedes cars and gets into first place and uh, now we've got Russell in second looking at the back of Leclerc and obviously that's quite juicy remember because Leclerc and Russell were, were only a season ago they were teammates at Mercedes so that could be quite an interesting one because they never really got a chance to fight properly for, for any position that mattered and now in two different teams they're fighting for first place as we see uh, Leclerc's teammate Sonoda pulling out to the right Bottas with a bit of a squeeze but Sonoda looking to get up into third place the Merc on the outside can't really do too much the Aston surely is going to get the exit no Bottas does very well turning back the years and Valtteri showing he's still got what it takes maybe to kick it with the big guys here for the top three positions as uh, he holds on to third place. Fittipaldi at the moment holding on to fifth, but uh, we're putting him under a lot of pressure. We were pretty much pushing him through the last couple of corners, and we now sling it down the inside of this long right-hander. You can see ahead of us, look at that, Bottas and Sonoda. They're fighting again. Bottas on the outside, Sonoda on the left. Looks like he's got the better exit, and finally, the Japanese driver is up into third place. So uh, very nice, though. Two by two fighting going on as we overtake Fittipaldi, and Sonoda overtakes Valtteri Bottas. Meanwhile, right 
to the sharp end as we focus on Leclerc and Russell. Well, DRS activated this lap and Russell is within one second. Are we going to see these two go toe-to-toe -to -toe for the first time properly in this race? Leclerc leads. Russell looks, oh, a little bit slow, you know. Oh, he is slow. Russell's off circuit. What's happening? Russell slows up and it's an absolute calamity for him and Mercedes. He's out. He's out of the Chinese Grand Prix. Oh, he didn't even get a chance to even attack Leclerc. That is that is shocking for him. That's going to be so, so upsetting. And you know what? Leclerc, I just said yeah, he, was a, he was a teammate of Russell's last season at Mercedes. And he left Merck after one season because he just didn't see himself winning races, maybe fighting for a championship with them. And he obviously got, you know, he obviously knew what was going to happen with Aston Martin becoming the best team on paper. And uh, that DNF has really now just put another little mark for a good good pro for Leclerc leaving Mercedes because as much as Merck look quick now here and you know they were 2-3 or 2-4 one of them's now DNF so you know all of a sudden Aston Martin really is the better of the two even though Merck have improved in pace uh, Aston have and have the reliability to match it it would seem because they're now 1-2 of course with Russell's DNF and uh, Mercedes might not even have a third place soon enough because I'm on the back of Bottas. We're sniffing around. Can we get the jump? We're going to go for the dive. Send it from so far back. Bottas leaves us the room. We're tire to tire and on the exit we have the better traction and we're up into third place. So that's not going to be the end of this battle though because Bottas will stick with us. He's actually quite good through that final long right hander before this long, long back straight and the silver arrow is going for the bullseye to the inside. We're going to have to just take this nice and easy. Be patient. We try to go for the switch back. Bottas may not give us the room. Let's test the theory on the outside. Break early. Go for a second switch back. This time we've actually put Bottas into a mistake there. He went too deep into the final corner and we are able to re-overtake him. It took two switchbacks to do it but finally we put Bottas into a mistake and we're up into third and hopefully we can solidify that as he's going to have a little look on the inside but we're going to slam the door shut through that right into the left down the crest in sector one. So we're up to third place and all of a sudden Mercedes have only got a fourth place right now to show for it and at the rate that Bottas is going maybe he's going to go even further backwards as Fittipaldi is right behind him. Lawson, Schumacher, Gasly, Poor chair even in science, not too far behind. But as we go on through this first phase of the Grand Prix, it kind of settles down a little bit here at Shanghai. Even though all the cars, look at them, they're all so close together. But everyone just stuck in a bit of a DRS train at the moment with maxed out cars, it would seem, around this circuit. But it looks like Gasly is looking to try and overtake Nick Schumacher. Eventually that rear wing will open for the Audi driver. Schumacher uh, not putting up too much of a stark defense, kind of keeps his car to the middle to the inside and Gasly tries round the outside on the left and the Frenchman I think he's going to book that in and get up into seventh place yes through the final corner he does but Schumacher actually gets a pretty good entry and exit from that so can he have a, a repass go to maybe re-overtake him to get uh, up the order meanwhile by the way, in this race so far, 12 laps gone, Borchair, he's behind these two, he's in P9, uh, and he's having to defend a little bit against Carlos Sainz, he's uh, kind of shaken off Drogovic, but um, he's in close company of, of, of them two, and also Norris and Verstappen, Piastri down in P14, you know, some big, big names in this race, struggling to get to terms with Shanghai, obviously, after so long away from this circuit, you know, you just don't really maybe get into the same rhythm as you once used to and uh, poor chair this is good for us this is just good for us even if we maybe can't attack the two Astins let's say even a third place versus his ninth would be great in terms of just our teammate battle but the thing is I think we can attack the Astins because we are slowly we have slowly slowly gained on Sonoda we've actually gained on Leclerc as well the gap was four seconds to the race leader it's now 2.6 Sonoda and Leclerc stay out so I come in because I told myself on that lap I'm going to do the exact opposite of what Leclerc does. You know, like in real life Formula 1, sometimes the engineers tell their drivers, look, if he goes in, you stay out. If he you know, stays out, you go in. Just do the opposite because then it's just that difference of either an undercut or an overcut. You know, either way, you're just trying something different. 
And that's what I thought we had to do, because I wasn't worried about Sonoda. I reckon we can get Sonoda for sure, because we were right up behind him. But I was focused on Leclerc. We bridged the gap from four seconds to two seconds. There's maybe half a chance here with an undercut. Could we maybe get close enough to overtake Leclerc? Well, lap 15, Leclerc's come out. And we are closer, but it just wasn't enough of an undercut to fully jump in. But we are within range. You know, we're just teetering in to under a second. We are under a second now. Eight tenths to be exact. This is it. This is our moment maybe to strike on Leclerc. Because to be honest, he looked pretty consistent in the first stint. So I think it's now or never if we want to try and get this race win in China and try to topple Leclerc. We'll have Sonoda. I'm not worried about him. This early pit stop was all about trying to overtake Leclerc. But unfortunately, a lap 16, as we go into turn one, he's built the gap up to 1.1. It's coming down in sector one. It's then going back up in sectors two and three. He's just clearly quicker in two and three. I've got that little bit of an edge in sector one, but even now it's it's not enough to get within that one second on the top left, you can see. Sonoda, we've got comfortably by six seconds. But uh, as the race unfolds then, lap 18 with 10 laps to go, Leclerc's got that 1.6 second gap and we're just not budging, unfortunately. Sonoda, he was about seven or eight seconds back. He's actually catching us in P3. Then you've got Sainz and Poor Chair who have managed to jump themselves up to fourth and fifth very nicely ahead of the likes of, well, Bottas uh, and, uh, you know, and Fittipaldi. Fittipaldi fighting ghastly now. Uh, really great squabble going on as the Brazilian gets ahead for seventh place. Ghastly comes back at him, though. Has the Audi. Can the Audi go round the outside. This is turning into a great squabble as they continue to fight for nearly half a lap now. But Gasly gets ahead of Fittipaldi. But yeah, uh, Sainz and Porsche, they were down in what? Ninth and 10th. And they've managed to jump Bottas um, and Fittipaldi and, and Gasly seemingly has got in the middle of them. So Sainz and Porsche, they're both on the medium tyre. So they've done a very aggressive one stop because they actually started on softs, I believe. And it's actually working for them because, oh, Porsche gets very, very close to Sainz, but it doesn't make a move. But, uh, yeah, Porsche and Sainz, they're the only ones on mediums right now compared to the cars around them. And they've made, they've jumped about two, three cars. As now Porsche finally has the confidence to go for a move on the Spaniard. The two nearly make some contact. Porsche on the outside, but Sainz is able to get the better traction uh, off the hairpin to stay in fourth place. But let's just carry on focusing on this because I feel like Porsche may have another go into turn one. He goes to the left. He goes to the right. On the inside for turn one, the Frenchman is uh, getting the elbow out very much so. There's definitely some contact between the Lamborghini and Audi driver. Bottas is just sat there, probably just with a bucket of popcorn watching this uh, extra extravagant fight as uh, Porsche is adamant he wants to try and get past into P4 and limit the damage for him in the championship versus the likes of Leclerc, versus myself, his own teammate, but it's science. A great wall of defense by this Spaniard and he remains in P4 for now because on lap 20, Bottas and Porsche in the slipstream and the flying fin wants blood as he goes to make one and two overtakes. Bottas is going for the two for one pass. The Mercedes has come alive and Bottas is showing he won't go down with the fight. He was looking a bit slower in stint one, uh, having fallen away, fallen back, but he's done so well there. He's overtaken both of them. Brilliant. Poor chair and Sainz, way too bothered by each other. And uh, they're blindsided because Bottas just goes right round the outside and gets both of them. Fantastic stuff. So Merck genuinely look better recently. And if they continue this trajectory, you know, and saw that reliability that obviously saw Russell DNF, they might well have a car that can maybe win again in Formula 1. Meanwhile, lap 22, two laps later, uh, we are defending against Sonoda. Yep, defending because Leclerc's pulled away seven seconds and I'm now struggling. For once, I'm actually not enjoying the hard tyre around this circuit. It's just not proving too great for me and Sonoda is looking so quick at the moment. So Aston clearly liking the harder compound a bit better. Uh, around this circuit compared to the mediums. I actually, ironically, preferred the pace I had on mediums. I was catching Sonoda. I was reeling in Leclerc. Instead, on these hards, I've started off quick 
and I've just gotten slower and slower as we've gone through this stint. Sonoda's got us, but we are coming back. We fake to the right, go to the left, to the outside for the hairpin. Of course, it will turn to the inside for this next part of the circuit, which is crucial to get the inside. But actually, to be fair, it doesn't matter. I've just out-tractioned Sonoda straight away. But look at how quick he is through the entry and exit. The Japanese driver is on the back of me, and he's actually passed us already. We haven't even got to the break zone yet. And so, oh my god, okay. That was close. That was close. I nearly broke my front wing on Sonoda. Wasn't on purpose for him. That's just where the AI break, but I was so close to him. That could have been a disaster there. So Sonoda's got us fair and square. He's defended that very well. And it takes us, what, two, two to three laps on lap 25 here to reel him back in. So I was, you know, I was mocking it earlier saying, oh, I'm not worried about Sonoda. We're, we're trying to aim for Leclerc. No, no, no. That, that was a pipe dream, clearly, because Leclerc is now off in the distance dominating this one. And I'm having to really fight to try and get Sonoda. As we go for a brilliant little dive around the outside. We nearly, nearly make contact inches away from banging tyres. But what a sensational battle this has turned into with Yuki Sonoda, the driver that I'm managing in F1 Manager. But here in the My Team Career Mode series, battling him as a competitor, the Aston Martin just doesn't want to give it up. We're using so much ERS here to try and stay ahead of that Aston. That Honda engine in the back of the Aston Martin is really bloody good. I mean, you saw the way he overtook us the first time uh, on the main straight. He just flew past us. Like, when that Aston really winds up, it's so, so quick. Maybe even a little bit quicker than the Lambo engine we've got in the back of our car. As we make a mistake there going a bit deep into the last corner, but that's, act that's actually offset Sonoda into his own mistake and giving us a little bit of breathing room. Lap 27, though, Sonoda is back on us, and we've got no room to breathe once again, and we're locking the rear. The rear end steps out as we uh, go on the brakes a bit too late there, and we drift through that left-hander. Sonoda gets us whilst we do that, and now, all of a sudden, Bottas is right up our chuff as well. So this is into the final lap, a three-way battle battle for second, third and fourth and Bottas is playing a very clever game because he just follows us through to overtake Sonoda. How cheeky is that? Bottas, he's actually got to be the driver of the day today. He took two overtakes on poor chair and Sainz, two not very easy drivers to overtake and now he's just followed me through with some clever driving uh, to you he basically used me as I was the horse he was the carriage uh, like we've done to AI so many times in the past I'm very impressed uh, as he gets up into third place all of a sudden recovers in this race as we're watching how the mighty have fallen the two Red Bull Fords battling each other for well pride really Norris up to P11 Lawson in P12 now Verstappen watching it I mean all, all four of these guys in that that area of the ladder Lawson Norris Verstappen Piastri you know Piastri a former champion on this game in this series in season three wasn't it um but meanwhile this season it's a whole new vibe and it's a whole new kind of outlook on Formula One on the landscape and it involves Leclerc being quick in an Aston Martin car because Leclerc is going through to win the Chinese Grand Prix it's his first win with Aston Martin Honda it's his first win in a long long time in this series as we hold P2 and Bottas is just about going to defend P3 to secure a very promising third place for Mercedes. They will be chuffed with that. They can work on that. Merck can work on that. And for us, second place, solid. We just didn't have any pace to match Leclerc. Fair play to him. He was the quickest man out there, and he deserved that win. Can't say much else. It's victory in Shanghai, and what a victory it is after an incredible Grand Prix. Tell me, Ant. How do you think they were able to deliver such an incredible result today? I really feel the track layout combined with the track temperatures we saw today suited their car. These cars come alive when the tyres are just at the right temperature and the driver did a great job managing that as well. They just look so comfortable out there. It's like anything, it always looks so easy when it all just clicks. It's time to present the top drivers with their trophies for today's Grand Prix. And there are a lot of people in the paddock very happy with this result. 
it's Aston Martin on the top step. Yeah, Leclerc was on an absolutely different planet. I know, yes, we lost time fighting Sonoda, fighting Bottas, but before that fighting, Leclerc pulled out a seven-second gap. He, he, he was a changed man on those hards, actually. For once, I was actually better on the mediums at the start of the race. Don't know what, what went on there. I was really confident about trying to maybe attack Leclerc, but as soon as he broke the DRS again, when we momentarily got into it uh, after the first pit stop, that was it. And uh, that man right there, Valtteri Bottas, uh, very, very impressive drive from the mullet man himself um, to recover because he was, what, down in P... Well, P5 at one point, wasn't it? Or P6 even. And he's got up to P3. Very, very solid stuff for him. Um, yeah, very, very weird Grand Prix. I, I was, uh, there's a few confusing things in there. Mercedes looking quicker again. Aston finally is the best team on paper, have won a race there, and it's Leclerc instead of Sonoda. Sonoda will be a bit annoyed at that, but Leclerc obviously is a higher rated driver, and finally he's looking comfortable in that Aston, and is actually doing what he needs to do and to make the most of that car, but Russell and Albon out of it early. Russell will be ruining that, but um, more to come from Mercedes, you've got to say, you've got to say, but... Um, for us in the championship, early days still, of course, but Leclerc now is in second, 26 points. So there's still a pretty big gulf to poor chair, but, you know, it's coming down a little bit. And maybe this one race might just wobble poor chair a little bit. Who knows? Who knows? But uh, for us, it's still very close. One point behind Leclerc. It's it's just early days. We're still winding up in this in this season and getting to grips with this car. That the, the fact the hard tire didn't work at this circuit, that's got to be a bit of a concern, you know, because that never happens. That hasn't happened once on F123. So that might be a little concern of, you know, is this new chassis and, you know, the maxed out car on this season, you know, ever so slightly a bit of a different vibe on the hard tire sometimes, depending on the scenario or the track. Who knows? Who knows? But uh, in terms of the constructors, still very, very solid, but um, much to think about, much to think about as we have another very different race in terms of the people involved in the top fight. So really cool can't tell a pattern at the moment there's uh, quite a few different teams trying to vie for being up there you know being getting the top spots which is very fascinating of course for you guys and for me to race so if you have enjoyed it hit the like button let me know what you thought in the comments below if you're around here then do get subscribed for weekly formal on content i'll see you guys next time goodbye